So this is going to be a long video because it's not a simple topic. You need to understand the concepts. That's how you can understand what is the right voltage. And I, I will give out all the details that you need so that you can select the right voltage to run your machines. And uh, I'll try to explain as much as possible. Okay, so this is the most important topic regarding tattooing, which is what is the right voltage to run your machines at. So I've been getting a lot of comments asking me, uh, regarding the voltage what what voltage do I run my machines at and uh, there's no particular voltage uh, where I can give you a fixed number but I will show you all the right things to do so that you can get to that magic number so that you can tattoo perfectly without any uh, problems so let's get started w uh, before you get to know what is the right voltage to run your machines at you need to understand a few different things that is how the machine works, what is stroke, what is hit, and what does the voltage do? What does the power supply do to your machines? So first, let's talk about how the machine works. I'll not go in detail about it. I'll just explain to you as simple as possible. This, these are the coils. When you connect your power supply, Yeah, the terminal, one of the terminal is connected to the coils and the other terminal is connected to your back spring over here. So the other terminal is connected to your back spring, which is also connected to your armature bar and the connection is made over here. So this is a contact screw where it's designed in such a way that the contact can be broken. So what happens is when you supply electricity to your coil machine, and in this video, I'll be talking only about coil machines, not rotary machines. I will compare a coil machine to a rotary machine, but this video is going to be purely about coil machines. So what happens is when you charge your coil machines, the coils, when you supply power, the connection is, the circuit is complete. The circuit is complete. The coils are charged, which means that the coils turn into magnets. these coils turn into magnets which in turn attracts the armature bar which pulls the armature bar towards it and when coils turn into magnets and pull the armature bar the connection is lost over here the circuit is broken so this demagnetizes the coils which in turn results in the coil letting go of the armature bar now the circuit is complete it attracts again because the coils are turned into magnets now because the circuit is broken the coils let go and that is what happens that's what continues and this is this results in the linear motion which in turn drives the needle into the skin so now what is hit so if you want to know what hit is of a coil machine hit is nothing but how hard the machine hits how hard the armature bar is pulled towards the coil so if you supply very little voltage what happens is the coils are not strong enough the mills turn into weak magnets it still has the power to pull in the armature bar but it's not enough uh, it doesn't have enough force to pull it all the way through so when you give a low voltage this is what happens it doesn't make the contact and when you increase the voltage, the armature, armature bar is pulled all the way through until it hits the coil, the core of the coil. And that's what is the hit. So how hard or soft the hit is depends on the springs and also the coils. So the voltage supplied to the coils determines how strong or weak the coils are so if you got a strong coil it has a harder hit and if you got weaker coils weak in the sense you know the voltage is not enough turning them into weak magnets so it doesn't pull all the way through so no matter how much you increase or decrease the voltage the speed of the coil machine remains same the speed of the coil machine is determined by the gap between the contact screw and the spring so that's about hit so how hard the machine hits 
is determined by how strong of a magnet uh, magnetization you have achieved that's if you supply high voltage uh, it makes the magnet stronger thus the hit is strong so now coming to what is stroke stroke is nothing but the distance traveled by the armature bar or the needle this is a shader machine so it has a longer stroke this is a liner machine so it has a shorter stroke I'll just compare them side by side. This is a shader machine with a longer stroke and this is a liner machine with a shorter stroke. So you can see the difference. This has a shorter stroke and the shader has a longer stroke. because you want a fast line a fast liner and a slow color packer because you want to drive in those uh, magnum needles into the skin so now what is the voltage so if you supply a weak voltage the hit is not strong enough it's a softer hit it pulls the uh, it turns the coils into weak magnets which in turn pulls the armature bar just a little bit and then it goes back it lets go so the contact is not made it just does that so if you go ahead and increase the voltage what happens is you're supplying more power to your coils which in turn turn turns them to stronger magnets thus it pulls the armature bar with a stronger force and that's when you can hear the change in sound i'm going to run the machines and explain everything in detail when it's running uh, these are the terms which you need to know so the hit depends on how much of a voltage you supply the bend on your spring and also the number of wrap on your coils so this is a 10 wrap coil and this is a 12 wrap coil which means that these coils are stronger than these ones so as i told you this video is going to be a lengthy one so make sure you watch it all the way through without skipping anything because i'm going to explain a lot of things in this video i'll try to cover as much as possible okay so what is the best voltage to run your coil machines at so i believe that there are three stages of voltage supply first is the low voltage the medium voltage and the high voltage okay what you are aiming at is the medium voltage and as i've told you in the beginning itself if you are looking for me to give out a number not going to happen because every machine is different every single time the the machine and the numbers change then the voltage readings change but i'll explain how you can achieve that how you can achieve the proper number okay so when you're tattooing what happens is you've got the dermis layer the epidermis layer and the hypodermis layer in the skin yeah you are aiming to achieve to deposit the ink in the dermis layer which is the second layer of the skin okay you your main intention is to deposit the ink over here if you deposit the ink if the needle travels to the hypodermis layer what happens is you cause blowouts the tattoo don't doesn't heal well and if you just tattoo on the epidermal layer it fades away the ink doesn't stay there it's not as strong and it fades away now if you use a low voltage which turns them these coils into very weak magnets which doesn't make the contact so the contact is not done 
So if you use a low voltage, what happens is when you run the machine on the skin, suppose this is a needle, the needle travels all the way to the epidermal area and it bounces back because it doesn't have the coils do not have enough strength to pull down the armature bar all the way through so it just does that so it just the needle doesn't even puncture uh, and go to the dermal layer it just uh, hits the epidermal layer and it bounces back and if you wipe away you can see a faint grayish line or if you color pack you f you see it, uh, it it's not that strong enough it's not dark enough so that this layer when it heals it just peels away and it goes off that doesn't mean that you can do temporary tattoos like this no there's no way of telling that but if you use the medium voltage you turn the coil machines strong enough to hit hard but not that strong enough to go all the way through so suppose this is a needle and you're using medium voltage uh, you're running your machine at uh, medium voltage what happens is the needle punctures the epidermal layer it goes to the dermal layer it deposits the ink and because the coils are at a medium voltage it's not too strong so it bounces back so it punctures epidermal goes to the dermal layer and it bounces back thus it, you can uh, deposit the ink in the dermal layer the best thing about this is why I asked you to aim for the medium voltages even if you have a lot of needle hang out of the tip when you use a medium voltage and you place the tip all the way on the epidermal layer because the coils are at a medium voltage it's not that strong enough so what happens is even if your needle hang is too much the needle will puncture the epidermal layer go till the dermal layer and it will come back it will not penetrate further because it's not strong enough because it's at the medium voltage now if you run it at a high voltage the coils turn really strong and it pulls down the needle as hard as possible turning it to a really hard hit what happens is the needle punctures the epidermal layer goes to the dermal and then it's goes all the way through the hypodermal and it comes back so you get a really bad heal and you get a lot of blowouts when you use a high voltage so it's a big no low voltage you can correct it but when you go at a high voltage it's always difficult so always start low and then increase your voltage to reach medium and i'll show you exactly how to get to the medium voltage so first this is just an example so all this has to be wrapped first thing what you need to do is set up your needle put the bend in the needle attach it to the armature bar put your rubber bands and then very important tip dip the tip into your ink cups you need to dip it into your ink cups the tip has to be wet you can either dip it in your ink cup with the ink in it or you can add a drop of sterile water because that reduces the friction so it gives you a proper reading never run dry so you need to dip it dip the tip in your ink cup or in a in any sterile water and then increase the voltage okay so i'll i'll show you how i set up the voltage right now it's at zero volt so i go ahead and gradually increase the voltage there i'll do that one more time now the machine is running but if i put my finger over here it just stops this is the low voltage that i'm talking about so the machine just begins to run but it's not strong enough so if you uh, put the needle into the skin right now no, uh, the machine is going to stop now i'll increase the voltage slightly 
until I hear a change in the sound. So that's the change in sound I'm talking about. I'll do that once again. This is zero. And that's the change in sound. Okay, so zero. This is the low voltage. And this is still the low voltage, but you you heard a change in sound. If you tattoo with this voltage, what happens is the needle will just hit the epidermal layer. So it won't go to the dermal layer. So you, when you wipe it off, the tattoo doesn't stay there. The ink doesn't stay there on the skin. This is the low voltage I'm talking about. I'll do that once again. The change in sound, the low voltage. Now I'll increase it by 0.5 volts. Now I'll put my finger over here and there should be a slight change when I just touch the armature bar. So when I just touch the armature bar ever so slightly, there should be a slight change in the tone. That's it. So that's how you know that it's at the medium voltage. So now if I tattoo, the ink will be deposited in the dermal layer with this voltage. Maybe you can also add another 0.5 volts if at all it's uh, not strong enough. Now I'll go all the way to high voltage and listen to the change in sound. This is high voltage. The speed is still the same. It's just that the hit is harder. So if I put my finger over here, there's, there's no change in sound. The machine just keeps on hitting. So when you run the machine at high voltage, the machine keeps on hitting really hard and it enters in the, the needle enters into the hypodermal layer if you have the needle hang out too much from the tip. So you're aiming at the medium voltage and that's how you can achieve it every single time. Just start low, keep on increasing gradually, do a small line, do a small line, wipe it off and check. If it's not strong enough, add another 0.5 and then do another line and check. Now, if the second line is strong enough, go ahead and touch up the first one and then just carry off, carry forward from there onwards. You should do that every single time and you will, you will not have any issues with your voltage. So now coming to rotary and coils. Increasing the voltage in a coil machine just makes the coil stronger and the hit is hard, but the speed remains the same. So when you increase the voltage in a rotary machine, the speed increases. I, I hope that uh, that has cleared at least some of your doubts. Uh, if you have any other doubts, please feel free to put down in the comments and I will make another video on that. Until then, Please invite your friends to subscribe to the channel and also make sure you have liked, shared and subscribe. Thank you.